Lesson three, communication and technology. So in this section, we talk about what technologies are used for communication and then what are the advantages of using digital signals for communicating or excuse me, for communication technology. So on page 312 for the Connect It, our question is, how is the ancient clay tablet similar to a digital tablet of today? How is it different? So on the page next to it, so on 313, you guys see a picture of this ancient clay tablet. It says it was used to record information 6,500 years ago in Sumer, part of Mesopotamia. So think about the things we've been talking about in class. Think about how we've been talking about it and how information is recorded, right? Or how it's computed um, digitally, how we use the series of ones and zeros. Notice how we sort of had patterns there. So if you look at this tablet, you know, kind of ask yourself same thing. Are you noticing a pattern? Do you see some patterns there? So circle a symbol on the clay tablet that appears more than once. So on that picture on page 3, 313, go ahead and circle um, something that you see twice. One of them definitely sticks out to me right away, but you'll notice um, there's a couple of them when you start to look even more like, hey, that looks like that one uh, from before as well. So go ahead and circle that in the picture and then answer that question. So how is it the same? And then also how is it different? Because that's not exactly the same either, right? So the information age. Information technology consists of computers and telecommunications hardware and software that store, transmit, receive, and manipulate information. What software is, software are programs that encode, decode, and interpret information. So almost think of them like a speech interpreter. So if you were in a foreign country and you weren't able to speak the language, you would have someone there maybe interpreting that information for you. That's what software does for us. So it's a program that will encode, decode, and interpret information for us. So examples would be like a web browser or apps that we use or games that you play or operating systems. Those would be examples of software. Hardware are the things that we're actually touching. So it's called hardware for that reason, right? The actual physical computer, your actual physical phone. Um, information technologies. This was kind of so bulky. I went through it and I tried to figure out how to turn it into notes and I'm just after a few minutes, I'm like, this is just best um, read essentially the whole entire thing. So every day, hundreds of millions of emails and billions of text messages are sent. Files are also exchanged online through clouds that are accessible from thousands of network. Every year, trillions of gigabytes of information are produced on earth, ranging from high definition movies to printable text documents to brief text messages about what to buy at the supermarket. The software and hardware that power modern information technology, IT, depend on each other. IT hardware is the modern version of clay or stone. It serves as the physical medium where information is stored and altered. Processor chips, batteries, disks, wiring, and other components compose the physical place where software operates. In some cases, the hardware you depend on is local, such as the processor, display, built-in memory, and other components of your mobile device or computer. Other hardware that you probably use is housed elsewhere, such as the cell phone tower that may be in or near your town, and the farms of servers that major telecommunications and computer companies use to store some of your information. By accessing data held on a server that is somewhere else, you can watch, listen to, read, or otherwise experience media without actually storing the data locally. We are now in a period of exponential growth of digital information production. So on page 314, what are some examples of hardware used in information technology? So I just listed some. So you want to go ahead and list them on there. I'm going to keep clicking through. Uh, so if you need time to answer that question, then pause the video and then you can and proceed. So communication systems. Today we rely on three types of transmissions to relay information. Electronic signals carried by wires, electromagnetic transmissions through the atmosphere, and electromagnetic transmissions through fiber optic cables. On page 315, Math Toolbox. With ever-growing numbers of people accessing the internet, greater and greater amounts of information and data are being produced. The graph shows data production and expected projections for the future. So we look on the bottom and we have time and years. So we starting with 2009 and then all the way up to 2020. And then we have exabytes or amount of digital data. 
on the left-hand side of the graph. Compare the rate of growth from 2011 to 2013, now with the growth rate from 2015 to 2017. Think of it this way. How is the hill different there? So if you were skiing on that hill, if you were sliding on that hill, how is that going to be different to you? Is it steeper? Is it the same? How do they compare? Number two, if the trend continues, how much data do you think will be produced in 2030? So using that graph, sort of estimate, where do you think it's going to be at? And then number three, how does the data support your claim? So based on what you think, what do you sort of have to back up that information? Okay, on page 316 and 317, we have some big pictures on these next pages in our books. Communications technologies all have one thing in common. They must move vast amounts of data in our digital world. For each type of communications technology, identify a benefit and a drawback of using analog signals and digital signals. So two things you're gonna have to list there, a benefit and a drawback. So making a telephone call used to involve a large device mounted on a wall or in a booth, which is wired to a switchboard operator in another location who would connect your call to a very specific person by connecting two circuits. You would get on there, talk to the operator, and they would say, you would tell them who you want, and they would literally connect those two lines together. There's no voicemail system to record a message. The signal could be poor, making it difficult to hear each other. Nowadays, many people carry phones in their pockets that can, can connect to each other around the world. So we went from analog to digital. So is there a benefit of using that analog signal? Um, is there a drawback of using the digital signal? So that's what you want to do in the, in the book there. For many years, radio and television broadcasts were transmitted using radio waves. Analog televisions and radios depended on tall towers to broadcast signals over the air. In recent years, televisions have switched over to digital signal transmissions. Televisions can now handle high definition media. Telecommunications satellites that orbit Earth can rely signals, excuse me, relay signals that cannot be transmitted by wires or towers. Some satellites are used to broadcast television stations and other media, and others are used by government agencies in the, in the military. So benefits, negatives, based on what we do now. Fiber optics. So fiber optic technology is based on glass or plastic cables that transmit light at speeds around 200,000 kilometers per second. Fiber optic cables can carry about a thousand times more information per second than standard copper cable. So once again, um, what's a benefit and what's a drawback to this version of technology? The internet is a complex set of interconnected networks that transmits information largely through the World Wide Web. The internet is usually accessed through an application called a browser. So think Safari, think Chrome, which allows people to navigate through the millions of pages. Internet connection used to require a cable plugged into a computer, but now many connections are achieved, achieved over wireless Wi-Fi networks or even mobile cellular networks. So based on how we get internet now, um, what's the benefit to that? And then what is the drawback to that? And it looks like two. Let me click back here a second. I missed one on page 317. Um, so you guys want to go ahead and answer that one. That last one um, talks about the internet. Oh, no, I didn't. Your teacher's crazy. I think I got them all. Okay. So what's the big advantage of digital signals? They are more reliable. They're more efficient overall than analog signals. Our computers use digital signals, so we don't have to have this conversion uh, back and forth if we're using digital signals. They also don't incorporate noise or static like analog signals can have. It's more difficult to access digital phone signals or communications, so it's much harder for someone to, let's say, tap into that conversation. Analog, really easily, um, you can jump in the line and actually listen to someone's conversation. Just even think about if you have a landline in your house still, how easy it is, you know, if someone picks up the phone and you're listening, it's the same thing. If, you're, if you can access that line from the outside, you can easily listen to it. It's much harder to do that with digital phone signals. They carry less information than comparable analog signals or less bandwidth. And that's maybe something that you have heard of before. We just have not uh, talked about it yet. 
So on page 318 first, we have a model at question. It says the first graph shows an analog signal accompanied by noise during transmission. So we see on the left hand here, here's the analog and there's some of that noise. The second graph shows a digital signal also accompanied by noise uh, during transmission. So on the bottom here are two things that we need to draw in. On the bottom, we need to draw um, distortion, oops, sorry. We need to draw distortion caused by noise. And then on the right hand side, um, restored digital signal. So it's almost like imagine taking that picture you see on the left and making it one continuous line. And then underneath the restored digital signal, it's like you're drawing it, but just don't include the green portion of the picture there. You would just include the blue part. It would be the restored digital signal minus the noise. And the big thing that you guys should be getting there is I can't get rid of it in the analog signal, right? I can, however, get rid of it um, in, the, in the digital signal. So 319 on the bottom there shows us kind of a nice, really easy thing showing us what bandwidth means. So figure four, narrow bandwidth means slower data transmission, which likely means slower download times. So on the top there, imagine bandwidth is almost like how big is the pipe? Like how much can I fit that through? On the bottom there, much bigger bandwidth. So using the information in the key, model the transmission of five gigabytes of data from your source to each user. So they're showing us that one gigabyte is equal to one square. So in the picture on the top, keep that square the same. Um, keep that square the same and draw five squares. On the bottom, let's do five squares. And now you should notice a difference on how you can actually stack those five squares on the bottom, right? Think about how much more efficient it is on the bottom. So draw those five squares in each one of those pipes. Um, then you are going to go ahead and answer the question on the bottom there. Why are there so many different types of communications technology? And if you need to use your book, um, go ahead and use your book. And then when you're done with that, uh, you're gonna answer these questions on page 320. So the lesson three check. And then I'm also going to have you guys in your book on pages 322 and 323. You're going to answer just questions 1 through 15. You do not need to turn the page and do the end part of the review and assess like we usually do. So you do not need to do 324 and 325. Just um, go up through there.